Hey, Kuhn. Hey, YouTube. Hey. Hey, it's uh, fantastic to be here with you, and I'm looking forward to talking about sports and Python and data science and all that. So let's just jump right into the show. Kuhn, welcome to Talk Python to me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, really yeah. cool uh, to, to talk about this, uh, about, about this topic. Yeah, I'm real excited to have you here at the... You have quite a collection of libraries. Now, up front, these are not all your libraries, right? These are sort of a, kind of an awesome list of Python or, and even beyond Python sports libraries, data sets, APIs, models, everything, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, th I think it's for people. Uh, it, it was quite hard to find uh, open source packages, um, and I tried to to collect everything I could find and make it available uh, for everyone to uh, yeah to find what they need. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it sounds <laughs> it sounds like a great mission. And as people will see, there is a bunch of stuff that we'll get to to talk about. So not. I noticed not absolutely every sport is covered there, but <laughs> many of the popular sports are are covered. And if if you are interested in sports, I think also if you are interested in just examples that connect with people, right? Imagine you're a university professor, and you don't want to use the New York tax mm. city New York City tax data one more time. You want to say, well, you know, maybe people are into soccer, American football, or uh, NBA, whatever it is, right? Maybe you could come up with something more interesting, F1. Mm -hmm. for a, yeah, right? definitely. There's, there's quite some cool data available to uh, to use in, in, yeah, in your courses. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Also, if uh, people are members of some kind of club or team, maybe they could use some of this to, to bring some cool visualizations or analysis to their own organization mm. right yeah yeah that's also one of the things uh I, I, that PySports likes to encourage to use open source packages um that are already available instead of building your own stuff um because that that actually happens a lot so that's mm -hmm. also one of the a part of the mission of PySport to to make people aware of what's already there and uh, try to bring people together. Yep. What are the big problems? Not problems. It's an opportunity, but it's also a challenge of Python. You know, if you go to pypi.org right now, there's 453,000 packages. Huh. I, I didn't know the number, but uh, that's quite a lot. Yeah, we're, we're coming up on half a million. And if your goal is to work with some specific data set or try to solve a certain type of problem, often the hardest part is figuring out well what library do i use does it exist mm. <laughs> and if so yeah. is it a, is it up to date and all of these things so having a list like this I, I, a place that aggregates it and sorts it and filters it super neat so really looking forward to talking to you about it before we get to that though just give us a quick bit on your backstory how'd you get into programming in python yeah this is um, an interesting story i think i i started programming when i was I think around 12, uh, when I get uh, Lego Mindstorms, uh, the Lego that you could also program. Um, yeah, my father gave me a Visual Basic book, and yeah, I, I should just figure it out. Um, so that's where I started with, with programming. And then during high school, uh, I also did uh, um, web development uh, with PHP. And yeah, I'm not really sure at what age, but uh, eventually I end up with, uh, I think, the, the first Dutch search engine. Uh, and I want to, uh, yeah, they need a P uh, Python developer. And I didn't really know Python, but that wasn't an issue. Uh, so there I, I learned uh, Python. And from that point on, I, yeah, only or mostly used uh, <laughs> Python. Right yeah. On. You're like, All right, forget this PHP stuff. I'm going Python. <laughs> yeah, well, well, to be honest, we, uh, my company, we still use uh, PHP. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Because, well, it, it works quite well. The performance is, is okay. I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to say it on this show, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it also had some <laughs> advances. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, almost every language has some. Something it's particularly good at and reasons mm. to keep using it. And then also there's just tons of software that was written 
you know, pick your language written in that mm. language and it still works well. And, you know, there's plenty yeah. of reasons to just keep going with it. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, Python is, is now really my language of, of, uh, most interest and, uh, what I really use on my, uh, uh, day to day, uh, work. Um, excellent. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. On uh, what are you doing these days? Are you still working at the search engine? No, that, that was quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, I also worked at a, a huge uh, online marketing agency, uh, uh, run the, the software department, and we created tools to um, um, collect all the data from all kind of different sources and um, make it available for uh, for the, the the teams. And right now, I'm uh, running my own company. It's called uh, Team TV, where we um, uh, provide all kind of tools um, where we use video and data uh, for example for performance uh, analysts uh, but also for highlight creation uh, or live streaming just to make sure that we um, try at least we try to combine video and data in all possible ways within oh, sports domain your, yeah that's that sounds like a really interesting thing to be working on mm, yeah um, yeah, I started um, mostly on, on the video engineering part. So we built quite some stuff or, ourselves there. So from people uploading uh, huge amounts of footage uh, that we need to transcode and how to scale it and uh, how to serve it. Um, so that's uh, stuff we, we build ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, later on, we, we keep on building more stuff around data. And also always uh, keep the combination between data and the video, because well, you can see some sort of metric, but you always want to see the the footage behind it to actually understand the context of it. Yeah, sure. Well, it sounds really fun. And you're also involved with PyData Andover, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I think for uh, even five out. yeah 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 five years ago we we started with uh, PyData Eindhoven. Um, we were already friends with uh, PyData Amsterdam, um, so they said, "Well, maybe you should also start an Eindhoven chapter." And um, yeah, I think this year will be the the anniversary, the five year anniversary for PyData Eindhoven, um, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it's amazing community, um, and that's yeah also inspired me to start with uh, with PySport. Uh, I'm not really sure if people that are listening to the uh, to this podcast know PyData, maybe, uh, I think. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> I would suspect mo yeah, most of probably do. At least the data yeah. science inclined among us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I can tell a little bit about it, but uh, um, I think right, right now we have a nice uh, way of, of organizing the meetups and trying to get more people involved and talk about data science and share knowledge. And then once a year, we have the, the conference uh, where we try to get, uh, yeah, collect money that we can send to non focus and they can share it over all the mm -hmm. open source uh, projects. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's a really amazing community. Uh, and it's Excellent. Great yeah, non focus it. does, a, yeah, non focus does a, a lot to support mm -hmm. the bigger data science oriented projects. Yeah. 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 I think that's kind of unique amongst the, in the Python space, I, you know, there's not really anything like that in the web or in the UI, uh, you know, there's not a lot of areas where mm -hmm. it's like it's organization that says, okay, we're going to try to find the popular projects and support them you know, across organizations, right? Like mm -hmm. people support Flask, but they don't also support Django <laughs> at the same, <laughs> in, in the same sort of mm -hmm. organization. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think it's, it's um, it's also an opportunity for all the companies that are using those open source packages to give back. And I think from doing it through non-focus, it makes it also easier because they use a lot of packages and can just donate to non-focus and they will make sure it's, it's distributed uh, over those uh, yeah, packages. Right, 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 absolutely. If you use pandas, you should also support numpy mm -hmm. right because that's kind of the foundation of, and so on yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting 
Oh, that makes a lot of sense. All right. Well, let's jump into sports and your project, Pi Sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there other people who are, are maintainers and working on this, or is this just your project? Well, um, to to get um, the, the meetup that we had uh, just a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, we had some more people um, collected. Um, and, and now we are building from there on to get more people involved with, with just PySport. Uh, but one of the, the project we, we built with PySport is the, the Cloppy package. And there we have, I work together with, uh, with Jan van Haren. He's a, a head of data science at Club Brugge, a big uh, um, club in, the, in Belgium. Uh, we are the, the main maintainers there, but I think right now we have uh, 22 contributors to the, the package. So that's uh, quite some people uh, yeah. contributing there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big group. That's a lot of people contributing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's start this way. Tell people what PySport is and about that. And then we can talk a little broadly just about sports analytics before we get into mm-hmm. the details. Yeah. The, the, the most important mission of of PySport is to uh, to you know to bridge the gap between the clubs and the the sports analytics uh, enthusiastic people um and by using open source packages because a lot of clubs are using um open source packages and um yeah we that's um Open source packages are used by the clubs, and people want to have a way to contribute to their favorite uh, club. And I, I think a lot of people are still struggling uh, by, um, on how to do it. And with PySport, yeah, we want to share the knowledge and uh, teach people on on how to do it. Um, so we try to get the experts from the clubs, uh, but also getting the knowledge from um, you know, like uh, pandas or other big uh, packages and see how we can get all that knowledge into the sports analytics community. And uh, with Cloppy, we try to set an example on, on how, to, uh, how to build such a package, um, how to work together on such a thing and also encourage people to, to contribute and um, yeah, show that you, you don't have to create a, a pull request that there's a major refactor, but also like minor things like uh, uh, typing errors fix in documentation and, and show people that that's also ve- very valuable to, uh, um, to a package. And, um, right. Yeah. Interesting. So Cloppy is standardized soccer tracking and event data. Right. So you started out with soccer or as uh, I guess a lot of the world might refer to it as football, but in the U S <laughs> that's a, that's our yeah, yeah. the namespace. Yeah, religion, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's uh, sometimes, um, yeah, it's difficult if we're talking about football, but uh, here in Europe, uh, we, we call it uh, football, but uh, yeah, for the package, because it's uh, international. So worldwide, uh, I, I call it soccer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less namespace, namespace. So, yeah. yeah so, um, give us a quick uh, bit of background on on Cloppy, but since it's kind of one of the founding, you, you created this as a way to sort of set an example, right, for how to create a package and mm-hmm. uh, that that helps people understand this event, this um, this club data. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what what um, wh- where that started is. Um, on, on, on Twitter, there was already quite some people talking about sports analytics, of course. And uh, uh, one guy, Joe Mulberry, he's, he's working at a, a Danish um, top club. And he asked for help because he created a notebook and he wanted to build a uh, Flask API on top of it. And I said, well, I know Python. I don't know really a much, uh, much about soccer or about data, but yeah. I would like to be involved. I would like to help you. And when I received a notebook, I noticed that like 80% of the code was about reading and standardizing the data to a, a format that he could work with. 
uh, when we talked about it, it seemed like most, at least a lot of people are struggling with that issue and doing the same thing over and over again. Because in, in more notebooks that I saw, people were doing the same thing, but in different ways. And some were not correct implementation or inefficient implementations. So I thought, well, one thing I know is, is how to read data and how to get it into a standardized format, because that was also one of the things I did at an online marketing company. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't so, know much, much about your data format, but I know about processing <laughs> data and yeah, yeah, that, it and all that, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. So, so um, yeah, I built a package start with just tracking data, um, but also try to explain what the next steps could be. And then people said, well, this is really useful. And from that part, I, I kept on adding uh, yeah, deserializers for different kinds of, of data. Uh, for the tracking data and also for the event data. And um, yeah, to try to get knowledge from non-sports bigger projects. So I also got um, um, Will McKinnon from the Textual package. Mm -hmm. He also did several reviews on this uh, package and, and uh, gave feedback to yeah, to try to get the package on a on a higher level, so people within the sports analytics community could also um, yeah, gain more knowledge from there. Mm -hmm. um, but, but maybe also good a uh, big a small a small background on on the the data. So the tracking data that's like positioning data for all players on the pitch. Uh, I think it's most of the time 25, uh, 25 frames uh, per second. Um, so you know the location for each player and the ball. And on the other side, you have the event data. So there are all the passes and shots and, and things like uh, like that. Right. At this time, from this position, there was a shot on the goal or there was a pass or there was a takeaway. or mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the event data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the vendors so, use uh, different uh, uh, formats. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, geez. <laughs> that sounds hard. <laughs> so first of all, 25 hertz of all the people's location. This is beyond somebody with just a pen and paper and notebook writing down, oh, at this time there was a shot on the goal by number mm -hmm. 25. Like, how do they get that data? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's uh, quite an advanced systems that I use. So in the stadium, I think uh, they have like 20 cameras uh, around the pitch and they, they use computer wow. vision to. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, to detect all the players and, and combine it. Uh, but I believe, and I'm, I'm not really sure if there are already uh, vendors on the market that do it totally automated. But I think from the system that I'm currently used in, in soccer, there are still some people needed uh, for difficult situations like a, a corner kick, where a lot of people um, in a small area and a lot of uh, can't occlusions see the happen. Numbers, yeah. yeah, they yeah. can't see the numbers. So just uh, after a corner some manual operator has to reassign some players or correct something. Uh, but it's yeah, quite a fun system uh, already. Yeah. It sounds incredibly advanced. It sounds aw <laughs> like an awesome data set to work with because it, with that much data, you, you really can make a lot of interesting predictions and mm -hmm. trends. I mean, at some point, maybe we'll just like put some sort of like tracking RFID thing on the back of the player's heads, just you know, <laughs> stitch it on there and, then, then you can fully automate it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, well, a, a soccer day, they could, yeah, maybe, yeah. I'm not sure if all <laughs> players would uh, accept it, but for example, on, uh, on ice hockey, it, yeah, you can put on the helmets. Or, yeah, you uh, could for, put it on uh, the helmet, for, sure. For football, sure, sure. Uh, then, uh, yeah. Yeah, and things like uh, automobile racing, you know, they have, mm. not all of them, but for example, F1 has incredibly a high frequency of like, points that measure where is this car how fast is it going the cars are sending mm. out real-time telemetry there's there's certainly many sports that have quite high fidelity in their data mm -hmm. yeah but, I'm, i must admit uh, i haven't seen the data from f1 yet uh but it would be really interesting to, to learn from them and how to work with data and see mm -hmm. yeah what can be applied to uh to football or soccer or yeah, or the sports. Sure. Yeah. I bet it's a lot, actually. I bet it is uh 
you know, just in terms of actual quantity of data, you know, how fast they're sampling it, how many cars for how long, it's, it's probably a lot of data. Cool. Yeah, All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's also one of the interesting things about um, working with sports data. The, I think the data engineering part, um, and, and this package just focused on reading the data. But then the next step, yeah, how to work with how to work with the data, especially if you would like to use the tracking data for a whole season. Yeah, that's quite some data um, that also pandas can start struggling a bit with. <laughs> You know, it just occurred to me, there's probably a whole nother uh, demographic or, or aspect who would be interested in this kind of data it would be like sports betting people. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that I have any interest in that at all, <laughs> but, but if you were trying to figure out like, okay, if this team plays that team, if you can understand, okay, this, their star player, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if we match up their moves against the other person's moves, it turns out there's a, a weakness in this way for their defense or who, who knows. Right. I mean, there's, there's probably, mm. with that much data, there's probably some interesting stuff you can do. Yeah. I think that, that uh, a lot of uh, vendors of the, the data also have the, yeah, the, the betting industry as well as their clients, because yeah, yeah. they, I don't really care to work for them or support them. <laughs> it's a little bit shady, I suppose, but but it does yeah. seem like you could. It's it's almost like a really detailed, really detailed information about companies for the stock market. This is kind of like a little bit mm -hmm. like that for the sports betting in in some ways, I suppose. Like really, yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Okay, um, so I, I think one of the challenges here is probably a lot of this data is not you know it's not easily offered up there's probably not a lot of json apis with low latency that are super easy to access for some mm. there must be but not there's probably a lot of data out there that is not <laughs> overly <laughs> welcome to either be given out or, or it's given out over in batch over slow periods or something like that right maybe speak to a little bit about the data availability mm. yeah yeah, that's quite a quite an issue, and and I mostly I, I most I know mostly about the, the soccer data, but I can imagine that the same applies to most of the other sports. Uh, and I think data availability is is a major issue, um, at least if you want to encourage the community to work with it and do research on it and um, get people, yeah build more cool stuff without being within a club. And sure. there's, there's some companies that already provide quite a, a big set of, of open event data. Um, Statsbomb is one of them. I think they provide around uh, 1,500 uh, uh, data sets for event data. But if you're looking at the tracking data, yeah, maybe there are like uh, 10, maybe 50, uh, 15 uh, sets available. Um, because all those uh, vendors have deals with the leagues and uh, right. they are not allowed to share it. So you have to know someone within a club um, and yeah. <laughs> or use a uh, beautiful super scrapey or something like that. Right? Yeah, that, that, that's uh, the other option. But um, then it's still very hard to get the tracking data because I, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure if you can actually scrape it. But that's... Um, it is one of the things that um, that I noticed when working on the the, the open source of Pisport website that there are really a lot of scrapers, and yeah. I think that's yeah. an indication that there's an, an issue with data availability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. This plugs into the API, but this is a scraper. <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess it's it's worth pointing out or throwing out a bit of word of caution just because the website is publicly available and you can hit it with uh, some kind of scraping tool. That doesn't mean you legally can do stuff with the data. You, you probably want to be pretty careful about that, right? Uh, yeah, because I think even when it's not explicitly mentioned, most of the times it's not allowed to scrape mm -hmm. the data at all. Uh, but also in, in soccer, there are quite some website that explicitly uh, forbid it. Yeah, and sure. Yeah, the, so the, the, the packages are there. And it's also a bit, I, I was thinking about, should I include them or should I not in, include them? Because they 
kind of encourage non-legal actions, but um, yeah, not, not really sure about again. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's I can see the case for both sides of that, but yeah, I just want to you know let people know like just just be careful with what you do with the data. It's one thing if oh it's an academic research project and it's just for my own interest or whatever. But mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> yeah, if you start scraping that entire website and trying to make money out of it, uh, well, yeah, exactly. you, sh you should not sh you should not do it. Yeah, <laughs> or find a way to do it legitimately, right? But just uh, don't, yeah, 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 don't don't sneak yeah. sneak through. All right. Well, I think I think it might be fun to let let's talk through some of the the packages you have here. So, if you go to pysport.org and there's a, a nav bar, and on the left it says open source, and if people click that, then they end up with a whole bunch of. You know, I'll open it just this way for a moment, and we can look at it and talk about it. So if you just click on it, it actually there's a, as a delay as it downloads. <laughs> yeah, there's still something because... I, I need to fix uh, because uh, yeah, yeah, it's quite some. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm not. This is not a complaint. It's just I don't know how many pages <laughs> that is, but that's a really small scroll bar. But yeah. what I noticed that's pretty cool is you can go in. There's a filter that you all have, and you can mm -hmm. filter by your language. Right now, you have Haskell, Python, and R, and others, and then you can pick by sports. And then you can pick by type of thing, right? Mm, so I filtered yeah. our discussion down to Python libraries just because, you know. The we we have a single title. handle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you could also pick amongst the different types of tools. So we talked about the scrapers and probably to a lesser degree, the APIs, right? The mm -hmm. API clients, which is cool. There are some in there. They say, here's the API, and we just built a strongly typed package rather than just doing straight REST, which is great. But you also have models and calculators like for predicting things, and then I.O. Mm -hmm. for file formats, visualization, open data, and databases, right? So yeah. there's, I, I encourage people to, rather than try to read the whole list, which is hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of packages, to you know, filter down maybe to the sport you're interested in, or a couple of sports, or the type of tooling you're interested in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think filtering is a is a must. But maybe if you have plenty of time, you could just scroll and and see what's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, it's still I think a very interesting list to to see what's just what's available and get inspiration. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite a list, yeah. Yeah. So, what's the sort here? If I come here, how do I? <laughs> how does this get sorted? Like, uh, is there any meaning to the order they appear? Or is it just when the when they were entered? Or, um, yeah, this it's a good question. I I need to look it up. <laughs> um, because one thing I I did is um, I also open sourced the the data collection part of of this website. Um. But it's it's daily uh, collected at least to to provide an update, mm -hmm. and I I think I must say I, I think there's a an order uh, in uh, when I added the packages I think that's the order of sure. uh, here. But um, to be honest, it it can be pretty random. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. So here, I'll, I'll just sort of uh, go through a couple of the scrapers here, and we can maybe dive into one or two potentially. So mm -hmm. there's Pyball. And I'll just, we'll just go through just to give people a sense, right? Uh, mm -hmm. of the yeah. ones here, right? So there's Pyball, which is a Python API, nice wrapper mm -hmm. for stats.nba.com with a focus on NBA and WNBA applications. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know anything about stats.nba.com, but it looks like, yeah, this is a whole website with all sorts of, you know, data. It's got mm -hmm. players, teams, leaders. Looks great, actually. Yeah, I think quite some people are uh, also using uh, this package, um, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's the mostly used package uh, when working with uh, with basketball data. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, it's, it's nice that they used uh, the API to get uh, to get this data. Um, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get quite a bit of data here. You've got like the player, their team, their age, um, their total number of points scored, 
uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff you can do to to sort of compare them, and yeah, that's great. Yeah, so if you're in, in, into basketball, I think it's a, a great start. Um, it's also quite active, actively uh, maintained. It is also one of the things um, that I yeah, intentionally mentioned on the on the list because some packages mm -hmm. are not really uh, maintained well. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's a it's a, a benefit. Uh, yeah. yeah, one of the things in the list that you call out is the number of contributors. The, mm -hmm. the latest version when the last commit was to the package that's pretty cool yeah i i in, in the beginning i thought well maybe i can just um manually update the list but yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> then i decided well i i think data engineering is is fun um let's find a way to uh yeah to automatically fetch the data and update it and also the, the, the license is pretty important um, uh -huh. to show it here. And also last commit to see how actively it's uh, maintained, the latest versions, and also the contributors. Um, because I've, I think it's, it's good that some packages have some more uh, contributors that you... Um, sure, the difference yeah. between a, a package with one contributor and one with 30 contributors, that's a big difference. It's mm. a really big difference, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, also good for people to see if there is a package with just a single contributor that that might mm -hmm. give an opportunity to contribute to it uh, or sure. work together. Um, so I, I, Pyspot would like to encourage people to uh, to get involved in those projects. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah, that, that could uh, could help uh, out here. Yeah, and each one of these packages, you can go in and open the details here, and it. Gives you a little bit more information, like it, for example, it actually lists the contributors and links to their GitHub profiles and shows yeah. their website and the GitHub uh, page and PyPI and so on. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you can uh, uh, look, um, uh, cl cl click on one of the contributors and see what other packages they, uh, they built. Maybe oh, really? One. Okay. So, like, if I click on this one, yeah, they've done this. Well, and this just one, just a single one. one. Yeah, uh, just... some of them they might have worked on multiple. I know Dependapod's worked on a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a really uh, nice contributor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dependapod, the absolutely <laughs> prolific open source <laughs> contributor. <laughs> yeah. Works on my project, too. <laughs> yeah, yes. I didn't realize you yeah. could actually see all the projects that PySport knows about that that particular user works on. That's a cool, cool aspect of it. Yeah, so I, I spent quite some time on uh, fetching all the data and trying to combine it. Uh, also fetching data from from uh, and also do the similar for uh, for the R packages. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and seeing how to yeah get all uh, available data on one place. Uh, it also tries to to fetch uh, images or screenshots from the readmes of the repositories works for some uh, yeah well. that's nice screenshots are really can be very helpful less in, important on the scrapers more on the visualizers probably mm. but still yeah. yeah yeah definitely what is um opensource.pysport.org written in um it's uh, written in um in react mm -hmm. uh using uh next uh, js so it was also quite an adventure for me because it's the first uh, application that might also explain why it's still a bit um, slow on loading because I didn't really dive into how to <laughs> to make it faster. Um, it used Tailwind, uh, but in the backend, it's it's Python. It's using um, uh, Luigi. Uh, okay. For uh, that's uh, I still think it's a pretty interesting uh, a tool. Because it's really simple to set up, uh, like orchestration uh, of, of some tasks, and um, right, like the daily scraping, the updating the packages, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then uh, there's a, a GitHub action that runs on a daily basis, and then fetches all the data and updates and commits it in a different branch, and that one gets deployed uh, to Versal, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. But if you're All interested right. well, in, uh, in in the the source, you can also uh, it's also uh, open source. Okay, great. So Pyball for NBA, we have the hockey scraper, 
which is for scraping NHL play-by-play and shift data with six contributors. That's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, I think what you'll see on the, the field list uh, for every sport is a patch also for uh, yeah for the NHL, for ice hockey. Um, yeah, it's a, a little bit less uh, maintained, I think. Um, but yeah, I have to, have to. I'm not really sure if it still works because with those scrapers, it's uh, yeah, it can work today uh, and not tomorrow. Yeah, as soon as uh, the, and it it doesn't even necessarily mean that they were intentionally blocked, right? It could mm-hmm. just be, hey, we've redesigned our site. Doesn't it look awesome? You're like, yeah, the CSS <laughs> selectors no longer pull uh, up the thing. So yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that. also on, on the scraping part. If it's uh, last commit is uh, like a, a while ago, um, yeah, yeah. It, it might it could it, be broken. It maybe maybe not. Yeah, sure. All right, let's see some more. Yeah, that's, I think in the stats bomb uh, API, that's an official uh, uh, package. That's also cool that uh, stats bomb provides an open source package for accessing their data. Yeah, what is stats bomb? I see that showing up in many places on these different packages. Yeah, stats bomb is, um, I think, one of the, the, the leading providers of um, event data in, in football, mm-hmm. and, and I think in both football and soccer and in football. <laughs> Um, so they uh, provide the event data, so everything that happens on the pitch, like uh, passes, uh, dribbles, um, interceptions, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they are also one of the uh, providers of the open data sets. Um, so, okay. Yeah, they've I, got a free data section. That's cool. Yeah. They, they uh, proclaim themselves as uh, data champions. <laughs> <Which is casual>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the data is, is uh, yeah, pretty pretty good. I, I'm thinking also w- one of the best uh, in the, in the market right now. But uh, okay, at least that's what I heard from some users that they uh, sure. Began. They even have courses, modern yeah. scouting and data driven recruitment. <laughs> okay, that's that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, you also have to figure out how to uh, apply. Yeah. Data science in your in your, in your in your job. So how to use it and um, yeah, how to right. yeah, use the data for for scouting purposes. Yeah, it's... yeah. If you work in professional a professional sports organization or even college sports, uh, in the U.S. at least there's a lot of recruiting people mm-hmm. up from lower levels. Yeah, that, that's um, I think that that happens in in all sports, but um, I think the data is really helping. To um, yeah, to to make the the number of players that you have to watch uh, from the footage um, a lot less. So if you can already, <laughs> yeah, make a short list instead of watching uh, fifteen thousand players, then uh, yeah, it's really sure. convenient. Or maybe you're looking for a particular asset or a particular part of the play that a, a player is good at, right? Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a, a quarterback for a football team that is especially good at running the ball in addition to just throwing it right you could mm. you could ask the data for that and and really you know narrow in quite quickly i imagine yeah and, and then you have to um yeah, work with the data figuring out how to extract it because maybe that, that single metric that's really important for you is not available um in the original data set so then you have to figure out how to work with the data and um yeah get those metrics out of the, the raw data. Right, um, I think, right. Yeah, maybe it's something calculated or inferred or, yeah. Mm, yeah. And that's also one of the things that happens in, in, in soccer based on the tracking data, uh, but it will probably happen in, also in, in football and all the other sports uh, that clubs will define their own metrics based on, for example, tracking data and use that um, to, you know, to figure out what players match their own uh, play the most. Yeah. Right. Right. Cool. Okay. So yeah, that's what the, there's, as you can see, there's a bunch of stats bombs here. Um, Pi baseball and M- MLB game seem to be uh, a couple of things around baseball data. Mm-hmm. And baseball is one of those games. that's kind of, I feel like 
baseball is one of those games that was almost created by a statistician just so they could come up with <laughs> with stats. There's so many stats. And you know, people get averages, uh, you know, the, what kind of hitter are they? Well, they're like a, a point three, you know, they're a 300 hitter, right? For, mm -hmm. You know, 30% uh, and all that. And I'm I'm not a huge fan of baseball. I've, I find it kind of a, a slow game. Uh, it's kind of fun to play, but to watch. And it's like, you know, same as golf. I don't watch those things. But, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're fun to play, but it's just like in terms of stats, these kind of games, um, there's probably a ton of stats here because it's all about stats there. I, I also believe that um, that uh, the, the baseball data science departments are one of the biggest departments over all mm -hmm. sports. Um, and if, uh, maybe, but I, I'm not sure about it, um, you can also make a lot of impact uh, there. Maybe sure. be because um, also in, in all the sports, for example, soccer, a lot of things um, has impact on uh, the eventual outcome. And it's also a discussion if all data is available to, um, yeah, yeah, to mm -hmm. to know what actually uh, has the most impact. So that's also one of the yeah discussions within the soccer uh, analyst community. Yeah, yeah. For the, both of these, Pi Baseball and MLB game, you can see from your your uh, Luigi automation. <laughs> There's, they're, they're both quite, uh, well, the, the MLB game is not particularly up to date. I guess the Pi Baseball one is more up to date. But, you know, 13 contributors, 30 contributors. That's quite um, a lot. That's, yeah. that's quite a lot. And the, the Pi Baseball was updated this month, right? That's, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, when I saw these, I'm like, oh, these are kind of similar. And then I look at, look at your page here and I see, oh, well, Pi Baseball is, you know, way more, up to date, modern, and you should check that out first, right? That's the kind of mm -hmm. value you get for having the info. Uh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Th that's also uh, the intention that you uh, have a quite a qu quick overview of, uh, yeah, how it's maintained it, and um, yeah, if yeah. Should... And that one against also goes against the API. So let's see, um, a couple more. I guess it's worth. Uh, Giving a shout out to the NFL Fast Pi. That one, well, you know, NFL's uh, got a lot of data as well. What else? There's some college baseball. Mm -hmm. Here's one that I think is that shows up across a lot of the different categories because it seems to do a lot, which is Fast F1. Have you seen that? Have you played with this any? I, I, I must admit, I have not month? played. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I should dig into it because uh, <laughs> quite some contributors. Uh, and I think it's really interesting to, uh, mm -hmm. to also see. Uh, the, the mode of sports or, or cycling or more those uh, sports to see what yeah. they are doing, how they are doing it. And, um, yeah, I yeah. noticed looking through here that there's not a lot of motorsports compared to the other sports. And so mm -hmm. people are, if you're out there, like if you're in IndyCar or if you're in motocross or somewhere like, and you got a package, <laughs> shoot it over to these guys and have them put it in the list. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, the Fast F1, they've got a page here that has a bunch of things. It has access to timing data, telemetry, session results. Um, and all the data is provided in an extended Panda data, uh, Panda's data frame format, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool, right? Um, integration with Matplotlib. There's a, an examples gallery too. You come over here and you can see it has things like position changes uh, during the race. So this, it'll say, if you go up here, It'll do things like you gotta go farm it, you know, go to the seat, get season 23, race one, R for race, I guess, rather than practice or qualifying. And um, that's Bahrain. And so then here's, you know, it has all the, the drivers, their time throughout the race, their position. You can see probably pit stop. There's a lot of cool stuff you can see in mm -hmm. here. It, it, it looks uh, really nice. And also uh, with those examples, I think that's really uh, helpful to get people started with those uh, packages. Yeah. yeah, it's not exactly a Jupyter Notebook. It's the HTML of a Jupyter Notebook. <laughs> but, you know, it's still exactly what you need, right? To, but I think to you can also even download it. That notebook. Yeah, you, you download uh, yeah. it right there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it apparently took two and a half seconds to generate <laughs> the script. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you can you even got cool visualizations like on the track color it by by speed around the the tracks of the circuit you know it's, there's a lot of cool data here yeah yeah 
I, I, I'm not really sure why I haven't seen this one before, but <laughs> um, yeah, it, it looks really, uh, really cool. Um, yeah, when I looked, I looked around a couple of the different packages, and this one, like the documentation, and examples, and stuff, seem seem super good. Okay, so that's the scrapers. There's many more. <laughs> uh, there's, there's plenty more there. Another one, models, calculators, uh, maybe take us through some mm -hmm. of the ones that stand out in this category. Like, for example, there's Lori's code for metrica tracking data. I love it that it's just, it's Lori's <laughs> code. Good job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is mostly about how to uh, also do all kind of uh, modeling on top of it, uh, do predictions on top of data. Um, you yeah, know, one of the, the, the packages that I think is, is pretty interesting is the, the soccer action. Yeah, of course, again, it's soccer. Um, mm -hmm. Soccer action is, oh, it's not on the list. Uh, this uh, is also a- uh, It's only Python, possibly. Mm. But for example, they have Soccer XG, which is, what is that? XG boost model? That's the ex expected uh, uh, goals. Cool. So what's the expected value uh, for a certain uh, um, yeah. uh, shot, if it should go in or, or not? So that's also based right, okay. on uh, uh, position on the pitch, um, uh, how many players are between the, the, the play with the ball and uh, the mm -hmm. goal. Um, so you can use it to uh, yeah, to determine, yeah, how if if a player should score a goal and and how many goals he should right, uh, the make from it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think this is yeah. actually one of the really interesting aspects is the model and calculate it. You know, the prediction mm -hmm. side is, is pretty cool. And I think there's quite some some work to do for uh, for pie sports because. Um, the, for, for example, the expected goals, that's also one of the things that I've seen in, in ice hockey and also in, in other sports where you have to score within a goal. And I think um, it would be cool to to find a way to abstract it over all sports. To, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it is kind of the same idea, probably different data sets, but, mm -hmm. right, like it's scoring in hockey and scoring and soccer is from a structural perspective of the data is kind of the same thing, even though mm. it's really, you know, quite different in size of the goal <laughs> and how easy mm. it is and all that. Yeah. But I think we can still learn from, yeah, from the other sports and, and see how they did it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Train sort of a model, but on different data, right. But same, mm. same type of model potentially. Yeah. Maybe some different features, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So the next category is, uh, IO and that obviously stats bomb is in here, right? Uh, Python mm -hmm. package to parse, stats bombs, JSON data to CSV, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Some on soccer, the, the spaddle format, which I have no idea what that is. Uh, yeah, that's also one of the, the things they, they built to make like uh, atomic data uh, format that's, um, yeah, also kind of standardized. Um, so there's some overlap between soccer action and cloppy. Um, and uh, I think they mostly focused on how to eventually work with the data. So calculate um, uh, also the expected threat and also uh, like um, a contribution model. Uh, so for every action uh, towards a goal, uh, how, how is right. the... Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So maybe there's a takeaway and then a pass and a pass and then a score. Like mm -hmm. all of those people should somehow get credit for that potentially, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Makes sense. Um, but they also build the, the way to load the data. And um, yeah, we're, all, we're currently also working together with them to see if we can make Cloppy uh, to, to load the data and have the, the cloppy package focus on on loading it and standardizing it and then uh have the soccer action using it so see how the the lego blo blocks can work together uh yeah 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 of course absolutely we have the nfl db a library to manage and update nfl data in a relational database that's kind of cool mm -hmm. yeah all right let's see the next category is the visualization mm -hmm. i think probably the excuse me, the most important part is probably the actual data acquisition, but the most desired part is probably the visualization, <laughs> right? Like... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, um, I think also um, 
the the data engineering part is, is not really how uh, you call it, really sexy. I mean, no one yeah. sees it. The output is a structured CSV or Parquet file, so that's <laughs> not really cool to show. Uh, but for example, yeah, the, the MPL soccer, I think uh, it's it's a really really nice package used by I think every uh, person in in the, the soccer community. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of um, contributors here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the visualizations look really cool. Um, yeah. um, they also have a, a huge list of uh, examples. Okay. So all kind of it's you can just copy and paste wow. to <laughs> to create pizza charts. Uh, <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Yeah, we'll actually come back to the pizza charts in just a moment, actually. But yeah, these are these are some good looking visualizations here. Yeah, and I think the interesting uh, thing about this package is that there, uh, at some point there were two packages that did similar things, and then they decided, well, we should just work together, um, and they spent quite some time on integrating those packages, and then there was one, and that's, yeah, I, I think that's really cool to see that instead of kind of competing, they uh, decided to work together and uh, make, sure. yeah, I think, one of the most awesome packages uh, for the soccer community. Yeah, it's it's really nice. It's really nice. Um, there's a lot of soccer ones in here. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. also one for a PT plot for um, American football, although I don't understand what mm. PT stands for. And then the the fast Formula One is also in there. We already saw those pictures, but a lot of nice visualizations there. Mm. Yeah. And is that it for all the categories? No. Then there's the open data. Uh, yeah, I think here. maybe when I look at this list, there uh, are some missing. Um, okay. But um, yeah, it's, it's still a bit limited on what uh, the data is available. And um, yeah, that, that's something that we should work together also with leaks to see if there's a way to uh, yeah to make some more data available. Uh, yeah. They have it, and they offer to publicly put it in the list, right? Yeah, when it's available, I would definitely uh, uh, add it. Um, mm -hmm. But there's uh, already some interesting data, um, you know, maybe a, a little bit smaller data sets, but you can definitely use it to uh, to start uh, playing around with it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So I think that um, kind of covers the list with the Python filter sort on. And mm -hmm. I wanted to also to give a quick shout out to NFL verse, right? Because mm -hmm. while not Python is quite a series of packages that does cool stuff in the NFL for yeah. uh, that data, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not Python. It's, it's for the R uh, users, but uh, I think what's, what's really interesting there, what they did is they uh, created quite some different packages, one for for uh, collecting the data, uh, one for organizing it, one for reading the data, one for doing um, uh, all kind of modeling, one for creating the visualizations. And I think that's um, also an example for, for, your, for other sports on how to um, yeah, make those packages available and making sure that everything fits together. So there's yeah, that's cool. It's in, under the NFL Vert organization, but a bunch of different projects. You know, you talked about having the data and stuff that's not immediately uh, obvious or predictable. You might need a higher level sort of thinking about it. And one of them that stands out here is the NFL Fourth, which is studies fourth down decision data mm -hmm. uh, with the NFL Vert and models, which is kind of cool because that's that's one of the big decisions that a coach makes and it can make mm -hmm. the game or it can lose the game and there's a go no go decision right and it, there's a mm -hmm. lot of it's not just well they went this far then they didn't make it it's well it was the they had 30 seconds left in the game and they had to do it or you know because otherwise they were just going to lose anyway right there's a lot of higher like sort of inference and higher level things you want to bring into that rather than just 30 percent of the time they make it uh, mm -hmm. fourth down right yeah yeah, and this uh, I think also one of the reasons they just build an entire package around it to uh, yeah to work with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now, before all the Python people say I don't want to learn R, I don't care about <laughs> R. It is also worth pointing out that you can call R <laughs> from Python. I don't know how much 
uh, like the visualization stuff still works super well or anything like that. But you can use, oh, what is it called? Um, RPy2. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, and you can end up, you just pass it an R file and then you start, you know, calling, calling functions or, or whatever, get a, get a function out of it and call that function. So it's, it's mm. worth, you know, if, if you really, really want to use the, some of these packages, uh, maybe it's worth doing a quick little integration and then r turn mm. it into a data frame, pandas data frame and running with it or something. Yeah. Yes, it looks interesting. It's uh, definitely uh, worth a uh, worth a try. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing I've ever used, but I can see you know if you really care about NFL data, <laughs> and you really care about Python, it might be worth uh, worth giving those those combos a look there. But I, I think there there is one package to work with with their data from Python. So if you look okay. at, at the list, there uh, there should be at least one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think it's not on their uh, website on their uh, GitHub page. But I yeah, think okay. there's another one that uh, integrates uh, well with it. Uh, sure, yeah. right. Not under the organization, but maybe somebody else made. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. That does. Yeah, that, that's cool. Excellent. Maybe they use this, this integration that I was showing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. And then the last thing I want to talk about here is interesting on two levels. So you've got a playground.pysport.org, which is a hosted notebook to play with some examples. Like, in particular, Cloppy and MPL soccer, right? Mm. Yeah. So um, I think one of the 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 issues or issue the challenges for a lot of people also working within the the bigger clubs is that they don't always have a a, um, a background in programming. So often they start as a video analyst or uh, working as a performance analyst, and then they think, well, there's data. I want to work with it. And if you need to set up your Python environment for the first time, it can be a bit overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's why I thought, well, there is Jupyter Light, which is a very cool project uh, based on, on uh, Pyrodite. Um, let's see if yeah if we can use it. And um, it is just a start uh, with the Cloppy and the yeah. MPL soccer package. I just fetched um, the notebook from there. Um, from the gallery and um, yeah, in integrate it into this one, into the, the playground. And you can just start playing around uh, with it. Yeah, and so here's a proper a proper Jupyter Notebook using all of their mm -hmm. libraries and stuff. But what's awesome about this, as you said, based on PyoDad, I'm not sure necessarily, you know, actually stuck in people's minds like this is running in WebAssembly mm -hmm. on on our front end right which is pretty epic <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, 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 it makes it really convenient for people to just start playing around with it uh, without uh, in installing Python and working with virtual environments um, yeah, you know it, it makes it works, easy for uh... you to host it. Yeah, it makes it yeah. super easy for you to host it because mm -hmm. all you're doing is serving up static files you're not hosting you're not running a Kubernetes <laughs> cluster or anything like that right uh, trying to yeah, prevent abuse yeah. of it and so on mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so um yeah the multiple sites make it uh, uh uh good to uh, for me and for the people uh using it yeah yeah for sure and it even does that uh that wild um what's it called pizza pizza plot uh that kind of style of plot that we we're looking at and it it runs yeah, fast and yeah. great. Yeah, this is really, really nice. Yeah, are you, are you happy with Pyro or um, Jupiter Light? Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there was, um, um, yeah. Well, yeah. There was some some issues with it, especially around uh, working with uh, with fetching data, because some of these um, try to fetch the open data from from mm -hmm. Statsbomb or also some fonts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so we we had to. Uh, work around it and um, it is also what, what you see on, on top of here is the the patching of the yeah. request the library to make it work in uh, Jupyter Lite. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it's better to, to have a working version than uh, uh, it th than not patching it. Yeah, no, I think it's great. It's, and then everything that uses requests can just 
do its mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, this is really cool. I when I saw that you had this, I thought, oh, this is this is clever that it's based on Jupiter Light, and it's really nice. Yeah. And, yeah. So um, people, you know, people can check that out. Um, uh, maybe people out there listening maintain some of these packages and have notebooks. Like, if they get them working here, could they uh, submit them to you and have them? Yeah. Also, the, this, the the entire list. playground is is um, is part of the the Pi Sports uh, organization on GitHub. Um, you can just uh, watch, uh, see the, the repository, and make a pull request. And right. uh, I will, uh, yeah, just review it and, and merge it, and then uh, it will be available here. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. So I'm really happy for more packages here, <laughs> more examples. <laughs> yeah, more examples would be very welcome. Excellent. All right. Well, I think we're getting uh, pretty much short on time for <clears throat> talking about sports analytics, but. Really, really good work there. Now, before you get out of here, I have the final two questions for you. I always ask. Ooh. Notable PyPI package, something you've come across. You're like, oh, this library is awesome. People should check it out. I mean, that's kind of the whole topic of this show. So we, <laughs> yeah. we talked about, you know, maybe 100. We didn't mention them all, but went through a list of 100 different Python packages. But something mm-hmm. you want to give a shout out to that you think is cool out there? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure if, if the entire Python world already knows it. Uh, but on, on the last... PySport meetup, uh, I made an example using uh, DuckDB, and mm. that was something that people didn't know about it, especially with integration with uh, with the Pandas data frames, that you uh, just build a data frame and run queries directly on top of it. Um, yeah, I, I, watched... I heard of DuckDB, but I didn't realize the Pandas kind of direct integration. It also has direct parquet query. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I... That that makes it quite easy to also uh, play around with with SQL queries. Um, and I was very happy that I uh, had a presentation on on last PyData Eindhoven conference. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's a package that no, well, not everyone, but it's a really uh, worth ch- checking out um, because it can make your life easier. Um, sure, I think it's just a Swiss Army knife for data data engineering and uh yeah i think it's a nice one yeah a great recommendation and um if you're gonna write some python code what editor are you using these days um i'm using pycharm so not mm-hmm. yeah not sure if it's cool uh but <laughs> i love pycharm pycharm's awesome yeah. okay excellent one um yeah so i guess final call to action people are interested in open source sports analytics they're open and maybe interested in pi sport want to contribute back or you know Mm -hmm. be part of it in some way what do you tell them um yeah you can reach out on um on on twitter or linkedin um to 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 see uh you know where where you can uh contribute uh and i think it's it's also if you're not working in the sports uh, domain and would like to contribute uh please reach out because i think the knowledge from outside of sports is really useful within sports. So there are a lot of options to contribute and uh, yeah, Ma- yeah, make a even more community, a ma- more uh, better community. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing all these projects you've collected. Yeah. Thanks a lot for being on this uh, show. It's really, really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>